So welcome back everyone. So before we get started on today's project, I need to address all of the whinging going on in the comments about uh, not liking the direction of the channel or the video the type of content that I'm putting up. So to speak to that, I've always said, I always share what I'm doing at the particular time. I don't make up stuff uh, just to make videos. Uh, it, it's you're, bring, you're coming along for what I'm doing and what I'm doing today is laminate. So uh, I have not done a lot of laminate. Um, actually, I have done no laminate. My dad, I remember watching him do a little bit, but I'm not super stoked with the green stain on the cabinet. So I went to a place uh, that had some remnants a couple oh, hours or so away from here, and I got two different colors. I got some nice blue and gray, kind of a neutral color, ran them by Mrs. W and she picked the gray. So let's get started. Here is what the project is. If this is the cabinet that we built a couple videos back, and we are going to cover it with that nice gray laminate to give it a nice commercial or, or professional look. Now, I, again, I haven't done laminate, so this is not necessarily a tutorial, uh, but we might learn a couple things along the way. So let's cut our pieces and see if we can't stick them on there. So I've got all three pieces I can get out of this section here. It's 24 wide and oh, a little over nine feet long. Can you cut laminate with a, a skill saw? Well, let's find out. So we've cut it, we'll cut it over, oversize a little bit, uh, and then we'll take a, a, a flush cut router uh, and try to trim it to route. So let's see if we can cut it here with the skill saw. Well, actually it cuts very good with the skill saw, so no problemo there. So we'll cut our two side pieces. We're gonna put our sides on first, not our face. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, and then we'll start our contact cement. You know how there's some things you just don't wanna do because <laughs> you start building them up in your head like, oh, it's gonna be too hard and you know, I gotta, so I, not doing laminate, I, uh, I, I went online, right? And of course the top video that I find is kind of one of those how-to videos, like on Lowe's, like how to do uh, homeowner style projects. Is that 36? Yeah, so I'll, I'll go 37 inch over, 36 to 37. Uh, so these, these how-to videos, and there's this uh, a nice middle, middle-aged lady, and she does a, a really excellent, like a one minute video of how to do laminate, and I'm like, oh good grief, you know, sometimes you build stuff up in your head to the point where it's a bigger obstacle than it really is. So I went to, I didn't go to Lowe's, but I went to Home Depot, and I got, uh, I got some glue, and uh, what else did I get? I got some glue, that was it. So, oh, and a router bit, a flush trim router bit. So I, I, I think it's gonna be pretty simple, and I think it's gonna look really good. So we only need to put the laminate on three sides because we don't need it on the bottom, we don't need it on the back, we're gonna have a butcher block countertop on the top, so just the sides and the front. Now we wanna do the sides first uh, because we're gonna want to have that thickness. You're gonna have that thickness on the corner of both sides and if we do the face last, then it will go over the edges and cover that so we don't see that, that end on there. That was uh, thanks to my dad, he gave me that tip. I probably wouldn't have put that together until it was too late. So make sure we're clean and dry. And now we're going to use our, uh, our just our regular old school contact cement. So for the glue, this is just regular contact cement, about a gallon. We're going to apply it with a, a very, like a foam roller on there. Now you apply it on both sides and you test it until there's no longer any tackiness to it. Until it's, you know, there, it doesn't stick and then we'll put it. Because once it goes in contact, once it sticks, you'll never move it. So I'll show you a little trick that the, the Lowe's lady had uh, told me. Uh, to make sure it gets on there straight. So we've got our piece up here. It, it stuff's got to be absolutely clean. No goobers, no no pieces of sawdust in there. Make sure you cover the whole thing with your hands because you can feel what you can't see. Your hand is very sensitive. I don't really have a tray uh, to put this on, so I'll just pour a little on there and then we'll smear it around until it coats. That might be enough for the whole thing. Who knows here? Let's see. Been about 20 minutes and uh, everything is that it's not sticky to the touch so here's the trick so placing this thing on here is difficult i know my dad used to use old strips from blinds you know like window blinds and i don't have any of those so this is what the home depot lady, or the, the lowe's lady said put a couple dowels on there because the problem is is we can't move this once it comes in contact so we've got to make sure it is lined up before it comes in contact with the backing glue right there. So we'll pull the center one out. And 
unstick this and work out Now the pro guys, they have these really neat rollers uh, to roll, to press, press everything down and get any air spots out. I don't have anything like that, so here's what I came up with. Acetylene tanks are heavy, right? And they're round, so what could be a better roller than this if we let's roll this guy back and forth a few times? So just feeling it, don't feel it. it feels perfectly smooth and uniform. I think that giant roller works out pretty good. Our glue is set up for our next piece, and then we'll get to do the routering with the flush trim router. Okay. To trim the laminate flush to the cabinet, uh, we're going to use something, well, according to the, the nice lady on Lowe's, the Lowe's video, uh, a flush cut, a flush trim router blade right there with the bearing on it. So that should come in contact. I'm not exactly sure how deep to set that. Um, I guess we want to set it just the thickness of the laminate. Okay, we're learning together here. So we will, uh, let's try it. Let's start on the back side. <laughs> In case it all goes pear shaped. And we'll see what happens here. Well, that was surprisingly easy. Here's our third and final piece. There's going to be some routering on this one. Now, this is the reason why we saved this piece to last, because we added a little bit of thickness on both sides, and now when we router, we'll router to that, and so when we look at the front of it, we won't see that edge. Hopefully, is the idea. Now we can drill the holes for all our openings. Overall, it turned out pretty good. I've got uh, some glue cleanup on that. I'll have to look and figure out what it takes to get that off there. Um, but um, yeah, so far, you know, everything's going to be covered, you know, that with trim. So we've got the switches and we got the 120 plug and then we got the drawer, the refrigerator. So all that, those edges are covered. You're only going to see the body. One thing that's not covered and was something that was kind of, I was trying to figure out how to finish was this because, because I used plywood on the face of this, it doesn't look very nice, but I came up, well, I didn't come up with, I figured out how the professionals do it, and it's actually super simple. Let me show you. So here's a little mock-up of what I've, we're dealing with. We've got the, the laminate on here, and then we've got that exposed edge. It doesn't look very nice. So what the solution is, is this stuff right here. It's kind of a vinyl T-molding. You'll see it all the time on the ed, ed, edges of cabinets and different things. And you, what you do is you, is you router this tiny little eighth-inch a, a hole in there and then this thing goes snaps in there nice and tight and seals that whole edge so the cool part is I found the tool uh, there was a guy selling these on Amazon um, you can see that's the tool right there it's just it's got a, a bearing on it just a regular router blade and it's got that eighth inch cutter you know kind of like a little looks like a little tiny uh, what do you call those blades there's you put on your table saw Anyway, it's a small version of that. So I've got it set kind of where I wanted to do a test cut here. Let's go cut our cabinet 
and see how that finishes that, uh, that, uh, that opening. Hopefully I set that depth correctly. So I thought I'd put the seam right in the bottom or the top. I don't know. I guess we could change it here. And I don't, also don't, I don't know, do you, does the guy need to put glue in there? I mean, it really, it goes in there pretty tight. It's got this, kind of those teeth deal going on there. I probably ought to tap that in there a little bit. So to finish this, I'm assuming we just cut, do you overlap them and cut them? I mean, I don't know if I can, how straight I can cut here. So that vinyl trim definitely finishes it off nice. Um, one thing I'm seeing though is that right here at the at the apex of these corners it uh, is wanting to come out a little bit so this I think this needs to be glued if you were to glue it it would pull that down in there what I don't know is what type of glue to use if you guys know and don't don't comment and give me your ideas if you've never done this before it it's sometimes we have we, some of us feel like uh, we need to be able to have an answer for every question if you haven't done it then you know don't don't say gorilla glue or something. I, I want to hear back from someone who's actually um, actually done it before and knows the right type of glue because it gets gets confusing in the comments when you have people talking about things that they really don't have experience with. So what did we learn on this uh, on this project here? First time I did, I've done a, a laminate. Well, uh, first off, I use too much glue. Uh, don't use so much glue because the more glue you use, the longer it takes it for it to set up. I had some of it. I had to sit around here for a half hour, you know, waiting for it to set up, and that's half hour per side, so that took a long time. Uh, the other thing is, is I, I think I set my flush trim router a little bit too deep, um, and it got in and, and on the one side over here and, and actually kind of discolored the uh, this side panel, um, but which is a little disappointing. Also learn, be careful uh, when you're uh, pulling your uh, your sticks out, your dowels out, uh, and not to shift your, your, um, your laminate. Um, it, it, I got lucky. It's just a, a little bit in that quarter right there. With the, there's going to be an overhang on the countertop, um, but it's done now. Um, that I, I mean, I'm looking for it now. I can't really even see it, even though I don't have my reading glasses on. But uh, it's it's okay. So be careful with that. Uh, what else did we learn? We learned that the that the oxyacetylene tank seemed to work pretty good for a roller, um, but overall it looks really nice. I'm just not really clear on this rubber stuff here. I need to. Do a little bit more homework on that, what, on what to glue that with. Maybe you use contact cement. And also, uh, what do you clean the stuff up with? Because I did, because I used a little too much glue, I've got some of this stuff on the side. But I would imagine a little thinner or something would do it. But it's going to look very, very nice. Let me show you, just give you an example, kind of with a switch cover in it and, and how clean this will look when it's uh, all done. Just show you here quickly. Here's the, uh, one of the, there's the components going to go in there. But a very, you know, once that's all squared in there, it's a very nice, very nice sanitary clean look. And then we'll have the 110 plug there, but um, tough, durable surface. You can, you can easily clean it. You can kick it. It doesn't scratch easily. It's uh, just wears like iron, but uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's, a, I think it's a good thing for cabinets. I really do. I think it's uh, perfect for this application. The moral of today's video is this. Don't video in the hot afternoon sun when it's coming through the clear plexiglass and ruining your exposure on all of your... The moral of the story is this, is don't be afraid to, to do this stuff. Yeah, it, you'll make some mistakes and it won't uh, always turn out as, as good as you can, but you're only going to get better at it. I learned a tremendous amount uh, today, uh, so um, I've got a lot, a lot more of this to do in there too. So the next one will be better and better and better. And... Um, it uh, sa save you a th tons of money. I, I, construction is so good in this area. I, I contacted a couple cabinet makers and I thought, well, you know, if somebody was gonna uh, want a little side work, you know, maybe I'd have them just do all that. And then, n you know, no one was able, no one wanted to take on these small jobs because uh, 
the economy seems to be so good now. Um, and so I did it myself. So that's it. That uh, turned out great. And uh, can't wait to get it installed. And that's it. We'll see you guys on the next video.